Hello, my name is Matt Cornock and I'm one of the co-developers of the Reading on Screen student support site, a website designed to support engagement with digital resources for both students and staff, in fact. The site's available at readingonscreen.wordpress.com. This presentation is an overview of the site, uh, and more to the point, why the site exists. We're looking at the challenges that are facing um, students today engaging with digital resources. And so what this site aims to do is to support them in developing new skills to engage with the digital world. So this session was originally presented uh, at the Higher York eLearning Network Conference on the 4th of June 2013, which took place at the York St John University in York. You can contact me on Twitter at Matt Cornock uh, and my colleague Blaine Parkinson, who helped me develop this site, is also available on Twitter as well. So the site looks uh, a bit like this. Uh, this is available at readingonscreen.wordpress.com and in this presentation I'll be explaining the background rationale as to why this, ex why this site exists and, and what it aims to address. So there are two drivers that have contributed to the need to develop such uh, support for reading on screen. Uh, one of them is learning resource provision and the second is the proliferation of mobile devices. So just having a think now about the way that resources are now being made available to our students, we have an increase in the use of web-based learning materials due to a range of um, and the access afforded by them. And that could be uh, anything from the academic resources we provide to newspapers online or blog journals that we're asking people to, to look at. There's also an increase in the digital journal article provision, um, which allows us to provide things more quickly and easily to the students and also cuts down on our storage costs too. We provide all our slides to our students, uh, all our presentation slides to students in a digital form. Uh, we don't provide them printed copies anymore. Um, and so if the students want to actually print them out, they do that at their own cost. But we want to provide an alternative. We want to say to them that actually you can keep everything in the digital world. There is no need to print out. And we'll come and talk about why that's actually feasible in a moment when we talk about mobile devices. There's an increase in PDF usage for other learning resources as well. So that includes digitised um, core book chapters, which we digitise under the Copyright Licensing Agency Agreement. And this reduces demand on the library stock, reducing photocopying, better for the environment, you could say, increases access and the breadth of resources that students can get their hands on. However, there is still student anxiety about uh, perhaps the cost of printing uh, and also the health and well-being cost of staring at a screen for extended periods. So here's where I draw upon some research. Way back in 1988, Oborn and Holton, they had some early work in this field uh, mirrored in later research about the way that uh, there might be some preference between on screen or on paper. So they looked at light text on dark backgrounds and dark text on light backgrounds in both paper and on screen mediums. And this was in 1988 with much lower screen resolutions and they were using a BBC microcomputer for this experiment as well. And the subjects showed no significant difference in reading speed or comprehension between engaging with the reading in the different setups. Yet the subjective questionnaires they, they showed that they preferred a traditional dark text on light background on paper rather than on screen. Holzinger et al. in 2011 did a study similar to this in a hospital context. They had 111 clinicians and they asked them to review uh, medical reports in both paper and on screen, and they found similar results. Statistical tests of the reading performance between printed paper and laptop screens should notice no significant difference, and yet 90% of those 111 clinicians stated a preference for reading from paper. So there is this tension here where actually the stats from um, research say there's no difference in performance between paper and um, on screen. There is a much more subjective and personal preference to engage with Paper, the paper format. And there are some pieces of research which suggest that this could be um, down to simply the way that paper is more tangible. You can feel it in your hands, you can move it around on your desk in a more fluid way. You can annotate it um, more easily with a pen perhaps than you can on, on screen. And this rises um, all those sorts of training issues that could actually um, be provided and to our students. And some of this comes back down to the way that they've always used paper in their lives. They've not really engaged fully with the digital world yet. And so paper is the default. And so they've been trained in that. We don't provide training in how to get engaged with digital resources. 
and yet we're expecting them to learn new skills and approach uh, things with a new technology and a new way of working without that support. So that's why one of the reasons why the, the, the site exists. So there is also a shift towards mobile learning. And I have a survey with all my first years in the very first week of their first term. And in the survey, uh, we found that 93% of our year one students had high ownership of a laptop or tablet. So that's 93% of them own a laptop or a tablet device. There's also an increase over the years in smartphone device ownership. Last year at 65%, this year it was 78% of first year students had a smartphone. So obviously I'll be interested to see what happens this October. And there's also a low ownership of desktops. So 22% are re um, have, own a desktop and so are using a, a, a traditional at desk mode of, of computing. So students own devices such as tablets and laptops and smartphones, which encourage them and enable them to access resources flexibly, utilising the wireless networks, encourage them to read on screen. So increased access via mobile devices also means that students can engage more easily with resources on an ad hoc basis, for example, when they're travelling, either at home, in cafes, in group work, but also this leads to a change in behaviour in class. So there is a conflict at the moment in the way that we provide resources digitally, normally in advance via our VLE, and yet still maintain paper usage in class. If we want all our students to have something, we will give them a printed handout, or if we're referring to something um, in, a, in a seminar situation, we normally have paper copies. And yet we are actually seeing students utilising their own devices more and more their own tablets or their laptops. Sometimes in lecture rooms we have this wall of laptops presented in front of us rather than actually being able to see people's faces. So there's anxiety also amongst teaching staff as to we're not sure what these students are doing on these laptops that they're bringing into class. There's also a power shift who has access to the most knowledge. The students are there with their laptops engaging with resources online and what we're finding is that those students can then challenge the lecturer um, because they've got access to all the resources across the whole world. The lecturer's only got their own knowledge contained in their own mind. So there's a power shift there in the lecture room who has the most knowledge. However, it could and arguably does provide a richer and more challenging learning experience. So there's an increase in mobile computing which offers a greater opportunity to improve digital literacy practice, moving away from ring binders, notebooks, to cloud storage and digital annotation. But that di digital annotation is a mimic of existing methods. So the methods we all learnt with paper documents are being carried over to our digital world, such as highlighting, annotation with post-it style notes and commenting. Single copies of documents even, um, you know, we think of sometimes digital files are just one copy. And we, if we really want to read for a long periods of time, we still probably print. So why do we use these, these approaches? Why not explore them and why not think about the ways that these current approaches are, are mimicking our paper-based um, methods and we're trying, we need to translate them into a more efficient way online or, or on digital format. So Manglen, uh, Wolgamo and Bronick suggest that whilst their literature review implies no significant effect in terms of how text is presented on screen, as a result of their study with 15 and 16 year olds, the more interactive tasks of highlighting tend to favour paper and in the test of comprehension of the reading, students who use paper performed better than those who read off screen in, in an assessment situation. So their explanations touch upon the ideas of spatial awareness, like where in the text a passage comes from, which lends itself to books and paper formats. So you can see where in the book their extract comes from or where on a page that extract sat and you visualize the page rather than the ever-changing display of on screen. On screen there is just the frame of the screen and so you can't really find your way through the book or you can't really visualize where it sits. But there was also a cognitive load difference where students who used the computer screens had to switch between reading on PDF and the test response window in a, in a different screen on, on the computer. Whereas paper users also had uh, the paper format and on screen was only the test. So actually the way that the two sorts of devices were being used, paper and computer, 
um, differ between the two groups and that can actually have an effect because if you're sitting at a computer and you're having to do two tasks, so reading and responding, that's different from using the computer just for a response and reading on paper. But if you think about if you engage wholly online, wholly digitally, wholly through your computer, there are mimicking techniques which are all valid approaches and there are tools out there to support digital annotation and traditional note taking. But it fails to take advantage of the full potential of digital documents, the flexibility and creative ways in which documents and resources can be used to support learning in and out of class. So Wolf in 2008 discusses how anchored annotation based discussion may lead to a better conversation about a text. And she goes on to discuss the collaborative digital library where students can see each other's annotations and this created a richer learning experience. So in that sense, we're taking our existing annotation through a highlighter and we're actually sharing it with each other, which is something that we can only really do effectively in the digital domain rather than the paper domain. However, there is a skills gap and we need to recognize that on-screen reading does require different skills to paper-based reading. Ackerman and Lautman in 2012 in their literature review for a paper to discuss results of paper versus on-screen assessment comparison make the point that if display-related factors are the source of reluctance to study on screen, one might expect this preference to attenuate with recent technological advances. They continue by citing research that suggests that learners don't employ as significant cognitive research resources on screen as they do on paper, and we can take that to refer to the Google generation which we are actually all part of, the generation is an age bound, where we use our computers primarily for internet use and this has led to us skim reading um, where our eyes dart around the screen, we're constantly trying to find the answer quickly rather than reading every single detail on the screen. And so we're trained now, we've trained ourselves to use computers in that way. And Ackerman and Lautman suggest that uh, drawing on research by Ackerman with Goldman say that they imply that users may believe they've learnt enough in too short a time due to their overconfidence with using on-screen resources, which I think relates to the way that we have our desire for quick fixes in Google. We don't pay much attention, and yet when we're reading on screen, a PDF on screen, we do need to pay attention. And that could explain some of the performance differences that this research has presented. So there is a different skill set which we're not teaching our students. The skim reading patterns, if you want to look at those, have a look at the research done by Jakob Nielsen. But there's also distractions of user interfaces. A page is just a page and it has the text that we want to read on it. On screen, we might have the start logo. We might have um, another window in the background, Facebook notifications pinging left, right and center. So there's this perpetual notifications and lurking dis distractions that are present on computers as well. Students are not trained in the approaches or the different tools on offer to support the consumption of reading digitally. And again, this is why this skills gap exists and we want to address that with the reading on, sc reading on screen site. So there are some common problems. And I think probably um, you will have experienced these yourself as well. And you've had students talking about, uh, in particular, how you change the font and the size of the font on a PDF. Now, there's, there's a whole host of research here looking at at the desired um, and the importance of, of a preferred font uh, size. Um, Lin, Wu and Chen looked at the readability of a Chinese typeface in different font sizes on an e-reader and small, came to the conclusion that smaller screen sizes, for example on PDAs on mobile, cause fatigue and larger readers um, and notebooks reduce that and a 12 point font is most readable across different devices. Derek, Goldman, Brewster and Gray in 2005 with a study of both young and old participants concluded that, age wasn't a factor by the way, concluded that font sizes in the range 10 to 12 points are more favoured. Too small is not comfortable and too large is actually also bad because it breaks up the flow of reading either through scrolling or sentences being spread out too much. Font size is actually one of those key preferences that people want to, uh, to, to change. And you might argue that, well, in a PDF, you can't do that. Well, actually, if you've got a mobile device, you can. And those sorts of tips and tricks are the things that we show on the reading on screen site. Devices then have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, we look at resolution, reading position, and weight of the device, the interactivity they offer, the connectivity they offer, the storage space, file formats, the easiness on the eye. We also look at the ways that you might want to annotate what tools are out there, what devices are the best, and creating a sensible file management and document management system 
using Evernote or Mendeley or Google Drive and the powerful search that's within them. But searchability is probably the, the, the biggest champion for using digital resources. With a powerful search, you can find everything in a few clicks rather than having to shuffle around or carry masses of paper with you. Once we've addressed these common problems and we start to develop confidence, it opens up new learning opportunities. And confidence and knowledge to manage and engage with the real resources in a digital only way. And we can be much more flexible then in terms of where and how and what you use to learn, drawing on resources and creating rich personal libraries full of personal takes on what has been read. We can think about putting documents in the cloud, the shareability factor, um, making annotations available through through something like Google Docs where you can view each other's annotations and then as we've previously mentioned in the research how that might improve the learning experience. Connectability as well, the ability to link documents together, link different resources together either through hyperlinking in the old-fashioned way or just building collections on something like Google Drive or collecting and, and taking snippets together in Evernote. So the development of ideas is no longer bound by the book request queue in the library. We're no longer having to wait for the one copy to pass down that queue. We can access that copy multiple ways by multiple people and engage within it in multiple ways as well. So here is the site again. It's available at readingonscreen.wordpress.com and really the focus of this is on skills and tools to assist in the consumption of digital resources. We, our focus on skills here, for example, look at annotation, the technical skills in terms of how to set up a PDF to be full screen or change its background color, um, web clipping and note taking. We also look at tools offering free solutions wherever we can. And we make a suggestion, our primary recommendation based on our own experience. We also look at devices. We emphasize there is no one ideal device and some are better at multiple document display. For example, widescreen laptops, some are more portable and some are easier on the eye. So there isn't always one right answer. You can search by device, file format or task. We wanted to make the site so that it can be, you can find the stuff pretty quickly. So though we have those um, six different sections there, you can use the powerful search at the top, uh, typing in your particular device or your file format you're trying to read or the, the task you're trying to achieve, whether that will be um, note taking or whether that will be annotation or something along those lines. And we've, we're trying to take a problem solving approach as well. So rather than presenting more difficulties, we're trying to solve your problems, which is why we're also asking uh, visitors to the site to tell us why they're there. So if you do visit the site, click on that tell us what tell us why you're here link so that we can capture why you're using the site and whether the site works. Because we actually want to encourage commenting and a collaborative um, way to building this site. Every page has the ability to mark it, whether it's useful or not. Very at the top, you can also share it at the bottom, and at the very bottom, there's also a discussion element. And that commenting and collaborative element to the development of this site um, is really in everyone's hands and it's for everyone's benefit. So if you find that the material that we've provided is now out of date because we're very conscious that software and tools change rapidly, let us know through the commenting feature and we can update it. Similarly, you might find that our recommendations don't suit you and therefore add your own recommendations onto, into that comments field as well. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We're not trying to rewrite a load of instructions. For the most part, we will actually link out to other sources of help, other guides that we've found that actually summarize the, the problem and the solution very efficiently. So I hope that the Reading On Screen site will help you out. And um, it's available, as I said, at readingonscreen.wordpress.com. Do make it available to your students in induction week. Do encourage them to, to use it. And hopefully we'll address some of those anxieties that students have, those often quite subjective anxieties through developing their confidence in the using of tools and the different techniques you can use with digital resources. And if you're interested in all those things I've quoted today, uh, the references are, are also available there. <laughs>